The charter is a document of completion. Now, there are many, many boxes that we have to check there. And not just in a perfunctory way, but substantively provide all of the elements that make sure that we meet all those requirements. If it's the number of students, if it is the physical infrastructure, if it is the number of programs, if it is the quality of programs. The charter is the epitome of a journey of a university becoming an in, uh, independent entity that gives it authority to have its programs, hire people, govern itself. It's uh, one of those things that you do as the last process in becoming a university because then it gives you now the autonomy to do the things that a university is charged with, to do research, to do teaching, to do service, to do innovation, without anyone questioning the quality or the authority of the institution. Having a charter grants us a full university status. We can sit at the table of institutions of higher learning in this country as equals um, and help to further propel the policy um, and practice in the East African region. What this means for me, for, you know, for faculty, for students, is that we finally have an identity. What Charter does for us is solidifies all the gains that we have been making, uh, you know, as faculty. So looking back, uh, when the School of Nursing started, it started actually at the hospital on one of the floors. And then after some time, we moved to where this current building stands. And we had just a few buildings that looked like a bungalow of sorts. And that's where the School of Nursing was, that's where the library was, and the then regional office was also based. Coming to this building means we finally have a home. We start to feel a sense of ownership. We start to feel a sense of belonging. And we sort of feel settled and a lot more comfortable to do what we do best, and that's you know, provide good quality education for our nurses and midwives. With the establishment of the centre here in Nairobi, we are actually trying to achieve international standards in healthcare education. With the centre here, we will allow students and postgraduates to practice their skills to perfection. We don't want to harm our patients. We use mannequins, which are patient robots, and these can interact with carers. Students live with the consequences of their decisions, so they get praised for their good efforts and saving patients and they learn from any mistakes that they might make so they don't actually make these mistakes in practice. There should be no gap between theory and practice and having that proximity of the hospital next door it will make sure that that gap is closed. We were the first centre in East Africa to start an infectious disease fellowship programme and it's an intense two-year fellowship in which we train our students who've already done two degrees where they're only managing patients with infections. By infections, I mean everybody knows of COVID-19, but the other infections are HIV, malaria, TB, um, Ebola, dengue, so all the infections that can be transmitted from person to person or animal to person. And we actually train them, so they're specialists in, in, in that. One of those areas of reporting that's very close to the heart of GSMC is health reporting. We couldn't have been doing this at a better time. What the COVID-19 pandemic has basically evidenced is the need for credible information and that that's factual um, and that's told in a compelling manner and that then you know, gets people to act in the ways that they can then make you know, informed decisions about their, their, their own health and the health of those people that are around them. Harnessing uh, the skill sets and the knowledge from our medical colleagues is, is something that, you know, being in this particular environment affords us. So at the Medical College, there are a number of things that we are looking to expand on in the coming years. We will be training innovators, we will be training people who are critical thinkers, we will be training people who are aware of their environment and the environment in which they operate. So by the time they graduate, there will be people who can fill the gaps that current uh, medical you know, practitioners might not be able to fill easily. Um, there will be people who can fit in any environment that you send them into. The standards that we set at uh, our medical college and in the hospital are such that they become a benchmark for other health facilities to aspire to. If we want to contribute in training, teaching, research for the community, here in Kenya, 
it's important that we really team up with the most important partners in this country. So that means the governments, the national, county governments, but also with private partners, making a public-private partnership, also with NGOs, with the communities. So, I mean, that's, that's the beauty. I really want to, at this point, really, really pay tribute to our donors. We are eternally indebted to them. And I, and I think the students, the programs, the faculty, the staff who will be operating this building will forever be grateful for the generosity uh, that they have bestowed upon us. It's a very long-standing uh, relationship. We know each other well, it's true all over the world. Uh, it's a successful relationship. It's true in East Africa where Akkadian is so active and indeed Kenya is a, is a key uh, country uh, for this uh, cooperation to happen between uh, your, funday, your, your institution and France. Uh, on the top of it, I would say um, it's also one of our most dynamic partnerships in terms of uh, cooperation uh, with a private institution. And it's also key uh, to uh, the success of uh, our partnership and projects. Our partnership uh, started 10 years ago. We already have a good uh, outcome to, to show and one of them uh, being the uh, Center uh, for Cancer and Heart Disease and where uh, Agence Française de Développement, our key development agency, took a major part in the financing. The building is very unusual in the sense that it's pulled apart and has these, these open air spaces, an open air atrium, a courtyard, an amphitheater, terraces that overlook these spaces. So you really have strong connectivity and visibility both horizontally and vertically throughout the building. We used the Meru oak tree as the tree that the primary tree in the courtyard. And that's an endangered species that's endemic to Kenya. It's not, not really found anywhere else, but it's in, in danger of, of disappearing because of over harvesting for timber. Having the Meru oak as that tree uh, gives the university an opportunity to say, you know, we're helping to reestablish the species and preserve that species. And I, I think that's a special um, dimension of the project. Oh, I'm very excited about the building. The architecture is great. There is light everywhere. It's really inviting everyone, not only to sit in your office and sit with your department or your group, but also to make connections. The student space where there are round chairs, it's a round space all over Africa. Decisions are made in round sittings. You go to Rwanda, Gashacha. You go to Botswana, there's Kotla. You go to South Africa, there's Indaba. You go to the Ameru, there's Njorincheke. Those are the very traditional ways in which everyone is being seen, can contribute, and their say is important in the final decision. When we teach students to make those kinds of decisions in those kinds of spaces, we create a cadre of learners that are willing to work with as diverse people as possible. My favorite, favorite space uh, feature is the, the kiva. It's quiet, but it's not quiet because in the background you can hear some humanness to it. But also because if I have my earphones on and my laptop, I can actually sit there, concentrate and do my writing and do my reading and just feel that open, fresh air that just sort of encourages one to relax, but at the same time, keep the brain active. There are many, many important features that in my view are just audacious uh, architectural leaps. Uh, the courtyard, for instance, the circulation that it creates and what it signals. It's a place of equality. We are all on the same page. The best professor and the, and, and the rookie undergraduate nursing education or uh, the freshman medical education student. When I walked into this place, I felt, wow, this, this is another opportunity for me to get another doctorate or to you know, pursue a postdoc degree or at the very least, you know, another master's degree. There's just a certain energy 
you know, and a certain excitement that this place presents. And I can't wait, you know, to just see what that does for me and, you know, for my colleagues and, of course, for the student population.